this is a high yield figure that deals with the abnormalities that go on with G proteins. Huge integration of biochemistry with pathology and microbiology. The important feature is that is when certain toxins are secreted by their respective pathogenic organisms, cholera toxin, E. coli toxin, pertussis toxin. When these toxins are secreted, when they come into a human cell, what they're going to do is carry out something called ADP ribosylation of a class of proteins called G proteins. Now, what the G protein is, is specific to what toxin is present. Cholera toxin ADP ribosylates GS, specifically alpha S of GS is ADP ribosylated. E. coli toxin also, just like cholera toxin, ADP ribosylates alpha S of GS. And as a result, then we get the traveler's diarrhea that goes on with E. coli toxin and a severe diarrhea that goes on with cholera toxin. But when pertussis toxin is being secreted by the respective organism, then alpha I of GI becomes ADP ribosylated. On the next figure, I'll review what does that mean, ADP ribosylation. But when alpha I is ADP ribosylated, then it affects cyclic AMP levels as well. And cyclic AMP levels will increase, resulting in pertussis as the consequence of cyclic AMP levels rising. So I want to conclude here with these three toxins. All three toxins, ADP ribosylate a respective G protein. The alpha subunit, a respective G protein. The consequence of all three of these toxins that result in ADP ribosylation of the alpha S subunit results in increased cyclic AMP in the cell. And in the mucosa, that cyclic AMP will result in the loss of a lot of salt, causing the diarrhea, and in the lung area and so on, results in the whooping cough in pertussis. But the consequence is elevated cyclic AMP with all three of these toxins. At the bottom of this table, oncogenic mutations. We talked about earlier where RAS fits into signal transduction regarding growth factors and insulin. Any gene can be mutated. And if the gene for RAS undergoes a mutation, it results in an oncogene. And as a result, the RAS protein made from the RAS oncogene can bind GTP in the absence of the preceding steps being generated. For example, if insulin is not secreted, if growth factors are not secreted, if the RAS protein has a mutation in it such that it binds GTP in the absence of the hormone being generated, then RAS is active. If RAS binds GTP, it's active. It will then, downstream, activate specific transcription factors, resulting in genes being turned on. Cells start to grow when they should not grow, resulting in oncology. So in pathology, when you hear about all those three-letter oncogenes like RAS and MYC and June, HERB, those are normal genes that get a mutation in them. They are G proteins and they work when they should not work because of the mutation. This figure is an explanation of what ADP ribosylation means. There are a number of toxins that work by ADP ribosylation of a specific G protein target. We talked about cholera toxin, E. coli toxin, there are other ones as well. But what does ADP ribosylation mean? These toxins are enzymes. And when they come into a cell, they are looking for a substrate. And the substrate is NAD, so, which is shown on the left side. This is the structure of NAD. And all five toxins, including cholera, E. coli, pertussis, and two other ones that are talked about in molecular biology, diphtheria, and pseudomonas toxins, they work by ADP ribosylation of a specific G protein. And they all look for NAD in a cell. Now, what's NAD made up of? Now, this is sometimes why a structure is useful. Not for boards, but for useful for understanding. What NAD is made up of, at the top of the molecule, that is the vitamin niacin. So niacin is at the top of the molecule. Now, look at the bottom of the molecule. The bottom of the molecule is the purine 
adenine plus ribose and two phosphates. That's ADP at the bottom of the molecule. That's ADP linked to ribose linked to niacin. ADP linked ribose linked to niacin all together is NAD. And what these toxins do when they enter a cell, they look for NAD in the cell. They cleave off the niacin. Once the niacin is cleaved off, the rest of the molecule is ADP ribose. And ADP ribose is then slung onto a target G protein in covalent linkage. So the ADP ribose is in covalent linkage onto a target G protein, which affects the activity of that target protein. That's why the protein is now called ADP ribosylated. On this figure are some of the bacterial toxins once again. The cholera toxin, again, ADP ribosylates alpha S of GS, increases cyclic AMP by increasing chloride secretion by the intestinal mucosa cells. What's happening there is by ADP ribosylation of alpha S, alpha S works better. We're stimulating the stimulator. Alpha S is supposed to stimulate adenocyclase to make cyclic AMP. By stimulating the stimulator, we make more cyclic AMP. As a result, increases chloride secretion in the mucosal cells. Same thing with the coli toxin, works very similar to the cholera toxin, causing the traveler's diarrhea. Now, pertussis toxin, it ADP ribosylates alpha I. And by ADP ribosylation of alpha I, inhibits alpha I from working. So now you're inhibiting the inhibitor. And by inhibiting the inhibitor, adenocyclase is free to work. It is free to make cyclic AMP. That's why cyclic AMP levels rise in the presence of pertussis toxin. Because alpha I does not work. Adenocyclase is free to start making cyclic AMP. So it reduces responsiveness to the receptor and in causing increase in cyclic AMP. And cyclic AMP then does all the problems with pertussis.